The four key elements of running a successful SEO agency with Anthony Barone. The In Search SEO podcast is brought to you by SimilarWeb, helping you build better SEO strategies with digital intelligence, insights, and data. Hey, it's David. What's the difference between a successful SEO agency and a struggling agency? That's what we're exploring today with a man who was the third hire at Studio Hawk Australia. Since then, he's moved to the UK and is the co-founder and managing director of Studio Hawk UK. A warm welcome to the Insert SEO podcast, Anthony Barone. Thank you very much, David. How you doing? Hey, Anthony. Thanks so much for coming on. Well, um, you can find Anthony over at studiohawk.co.uk. So, Anthony, is SEO in the UK much different to SEO in Australia? I think it is. I think uh, in the UK, we've got a bit more, we've got a bigger market. We've got more knowledgeable people. We've got uh, a lot more competition on the agency side. And this is just the UK agency side. You've got great people, great agencies from all walks of life um, dealing with B2B or B2C. And then on the in-house side, you've got a lot of uh, more knowledgeable people who as an agency myself, having to deal with those in-house people, they really make you step up your game, I would say. So yeah, a lot more knowledgeable people on the in-house and agency front. So, but you know, healthy competition is good. You're good. Okay, well, today you're sharing the four key elements of running a successful SEO agency. So let's start off with clients. Uh, So how do you treat clients to make them happy? What kind of things are clients looking for nowadays? So clients, I think nowadays, they've got a bit more of an understanding um, as to what SEO is. But the biggest thing for us is matching the SEO strategy with the business goals. So making them understand how all this SEO jargon will actually match to what they want to achieve. And that's the biggest thing for us. So what we want to try and do is we try and create wow, try and keep keep the clients happy, but also just try and make sure that they understand what we're doing. Because if they understand what we're doing, well, you're more likely to get buy-in. You're more likely to, to, you know, be able to speak their language. They just know the X's and O's in their life and their business and in their bubble. And when you come at them with like SEO jargon, oh yeah, I did like 40 meta title tags and fixed up this on the privacy policy page and all this other stuff. And it's just like, they don't know what that is. But if you can match that to their business goal, saying, hey, we created um, this blog, which led to an, a rise in clicks and impressions for this keyword, which has helped lead to X amount of bookings. Like, so being able to match that with their business goals is something that we try and try and focus on because then just speak their language. That's one of the biggest ones that we try and do. And do you have or have you had clients that um, perhaps have unrealistic goals or goals that are tricky to track to, to, to measure against from an organic search perspective? Yeah. And, and that's, that's where it gets tricky. So we try and do our due diligence on the, on the proposal side where we're trying to work with people who we can actually bring some value to. Um, Cause sometimes SEO isn't the right move for, for some businesses where, you know, maybe they get their business and their clientele another way and SEO is not going to be the silver bullet. So I think for us dealing with those tricky ones, we try and trying to do a better job at our due diligence at the start so we can at least make sure the foundations are there to make sure SEO is a channel that we can grow and develop. But the biggest one is probably communication. So really trying to put yourself in their shoes and understand, all right, what are you trying to do? And then just, you just got to try and be smart about it and try, try, trying to figure out their, their goals and how best we can track it. Not everything's going to be trackable. Not everything's going to be guaranteed in SEO. It's, you know, it's not the, it's not the way it is but that's the, that's the game that we're in. So I think for us, it's about communication, really just trying to break it down to the simplest sort of number and then work from there. That's how we try and do it. Even with like really, really niche or really, really technical or weird businesses that you deal with. Or, yeah, that's what we try and do. And what kind of trends are you seeing in terms of what clients want to do in-house and what they want to use agencies for? I think the, the obviously everyone knows this from ChatGPT. So content is something that they're going to try and push in-house that they're really trying to, they think they can do themselves. As we know with helpful content update, EEAT, all this other stuff, we know that just pumping out ChatGPT content is not great. So you're going to get hit eventually, but these business owners don't know that. So this is where an agency needs to be able to have that conversation, whether they're in that proposal stage or that lead stage, have that conversation with the client um, to be like, look, don't just copy and paste ChatGPT, even though it might be cheaper and, and faster it's not going to do you good for the long term, which is what SEO is. SEO is a long term game. So I think the content stuff, they're really trying to either do in house or do it themselves because they can use AI tools, but they don't have the reference point as to how it can screw them over later. And I think they'll use agencies for technical stuff. So they might have, they might have tried, you know, their hand at a Shopify site or WordPress site and they've just gotten a bit too much for them because they've grown and they'll come to us 
to be like for that technical expertise. And then we're able to talk to them about content and link building and international local SEO. And talking about the technical side of things, um, the number two area that we're looking at is systems. Um, so what are clients looking for in terms of systems? Is there a particular software that um, tends to be more popular nowadays? Um, is it still okay to do things like producing reports in Excel or um, have things moved on from there now? Uh, for us, we like we still do manual reports through like Google Slides and um, and because I think for me, reporting is one of the most important things because SEO is an intangible industry, but reporting is tangible. It's something that they can see, they can get. You can have that client meeting. You can have that in-person meeting. You can show them that dashboard. You can show them that stuff. And your communication is something that they, they're experiencing. So that's that tangible report or that tangible call that they can understand what, what it is that you're doing. So we still do that manually. I think for me, you know, SEMrush still gets a, a plug from like a lot of people. It's like, oh, I've used SEMrush. And that's one of the, you know, big brands that they know that I've heard of a lot from clients who might not actually do too much, but yeah, I signed up for a free trial sort of thing um, that they'll use. But the, in terms of the technical stuff, they don't really know too much about it. That's why they come to us. They might've seen something on LinkedIn or they might've seen something, you know, from another previous agency where they've heard of another, another site auditing tool, but they're not going to really use it themselves because they, they just don't have the time and the expertise. So yeah, SEMrush is usually the biggest one that they'll like sign up for a free trial and try and dabble at, but then realize it's too much for them and then go to an agency or hire someone in-house. And what about reporting? So uh, you mentioned Google Slides there as well. Um, I mean, do you provide reports once a month? Do you maybe meet with clients um, once a month and have a big meeting once a quarter or um, is it a different system compared with that? So we use, yeah, Google Slides, Google Docs, you know, Google Workplace. So we're using all that stuff to be able to provide sheets and information to our clients. And we like to have a monthly call or an in-person meeting. So that's, I'm at, a, I'm at a client's place right now. So yeah, that's what we, that's what we try and do to really push that communication forward so they can understand and just build a relationship with them. Great. Okay. And um, is that relationship building different for every client or you, do you tend to do it a similar way for, for each client? So, like some of them are different. Some of them, are, you know, we have clients that are just on Google Meet and we never, they're, you know, they're out in Europe somewhere and we're never going to see them again. So it's a bit different because the medium of, of online is like, here's my report. Here's the report. What questions do you have? Sort of go home. I'm currently sitting in a cocktail bar with one of my clients and you're able to hang out, have a drink, have a chat, be able to have conversations about life and just understand more about what they do because um, it's just the in-person thing. So yeah, I do try and push in-person and we, you know, uh, people are different. So you're not going to take the same approach with you know, a venue like this as you would a law firm, just two different types of people, hospitality and legal, just two different. So yeah, I'd say it's a different for, for everyone. And talking about in person or not in person, um, the the third key area that we're focusing on is staff. And um, there's been a trend over the last few years, partly due to COVID, um, staff working remotely, staff moving back in house, but not completely in house. Is what, and what kind of trends are you seeing in terms of um, staff and and recruitment and and what staff are looking for? Yeah, I have. I'm currently going through a hiring round for a junior at the moment, and uh, I've got a lot of a lot more positivity around coming into the office. So when people are saying to me, like I say, because we're an in-office team, we do four days a week in the office and then um, Friday's working from home to give that sort of flexibility, have, you know, life admin on the Friday sort of stuff. But we're an in-office team because we're small. I like people in the office. I think we're a small team. So I like people being able to hang out, being able to build the camaraderie, being able to build, build a team and just being able to hang out. But also I like that flexibility on the Friday. So Personally, I get, the, I get the office to myself and everyone gets to hang out at home. But yeah, I'm more skewed to being in the office and hanging out with people and building that relationship. But I know remote has worked with some people, but just this hiring round I've done, a lot more people like are a bit more excited that it's an, it's an in-office job that they're going to be able to meet the team, hang out, build relationships with. Um, because, you know, you're spending eight hours a day with people. You want it to not only have the work enjoyable, but do it with great people and build a relationship and friendships there as well. And what does staff training look like, like, look like nowadays? And also, how do people look to evolve their careers in SEO? Because two years out, three years out seems a very long time, certainly with AI as well. So how, how do you plan for that? Yeah, two years out of SEO, three years out of SEO, you're going to be behind the eight ball. Like you see this with uh, clients or people you're talking to where they're like, oh, I did SEO like eight, 10 years ago. Is it still the same? Can we do like doorway pages and white, white, key, white text keywords in the footer and stuff like that? Yeah, two years out is good. I think for for us, we've got our own training platform called Hawk Academy, which goes from basic to advanced SEO that we train all our juniors on. 
and we, you know, we, we give out to clients. So that's one, but also I see SEO as like, it, it's very practical. You could read about SEO all day, but until you jump into a website, until you work with other people, until you even read case studies and things like that, to be able to input those learnings onto a client, it's not going to like, you're not going to go as far. Like you could read about kicking a football all day, but until you actually kick a football, you're not going to know. And that's what SEO is like. So for me, ongoing training is the industry is great. So you're learning from other people in the industry. So LinkedIn, Search Engine Land, Search Engine Journal, great blogs, great newsletters, Alida, Solus, Steve Toff, their newsletters. Those types of things are great because we get to then chuck them in our internal Slack. Hey, look at this from so-and-so. Look at this great blog. Tom Critchlow is another one with that higher level SEO strategy stuff. So just learning from others. And that's what I like about the community is that a lot of people are doing a lot of really cool stuff that you can learn from and implement. Because SEO is not like some sort of medical degree where you've got like a standards and association like, like that. SEO is what works for one client won't work for another. What works for one business won't work for so-and-so. This platform's different to that one. This issue is not the same as on this platform. So learning from others and then just literally having a go. So I like to throw my people in the deep end, but with the safety boats around them and go, hey, have a crack at this WordPress website and do this, this, this. See how you get on and then go from there, because that's what it is. You say that you're recruiting a junior at the moment as well. What are maybe a couple of questions that you ask them to try and pinpoint whether or not they're the right person for your agency? Well, that's a good one. So we hire with no experience. So we train and build and grow from the ground up. We're looking for more the soft skills and intangibles and sort of the, the, the core, uh, the vibe, I would say. But we based off our core values. So we want to make sure that someone who's you know confident yet humble, you know, continually loves to learn, will be able to help out a team, teammate. So having, you know, having each other's backs and help out and jump in, even when it might not be their remit or, you know, the issue wasn't their fault, but they'll jump in and help out. And just being able to like be, be proud of their work and really want to, um, really want to do a good job. So like some of the questions we'll ask will be like, you know, if your name was attached to a piece of work and somebody saw that, what would you want that person to think about your work? Which gets them to think like, all right, Am I proud of my work? Do I actually care? Or like, you know, do I, do I want people to think I did a good job? When they see my name, I want people to think X, Y, Z. So that's a good one to, they, they think a bit of self-awareness there and they sort of think internally. And then, you know, you have the usual strengths and weaknesses question and see how they react to that. But yeah, it's, it's more just trying to, if you, if you believe in your core values and you follow your core values and you hire based off that, you should go more right than wrong. Brilliant. Okay. And the final key element that I'd like to touch on with regards to running a successful agency nowadays is finding new clients. So AKA sales. So what are one or two tips that you could offer about sales? I mean, for instance, how long is the sales cycle? Do you focus on building relationships? Is there some kind of sales process that you try to follow for each potential client? Yeah. Relationships. So for us, it's when I came to the country, I knew no one. So it was about networking and, and spreading yourself thin to be able to meet some new people. Now it's about honing in on building those stronger relationships. Um, so because we only do SEO, we're able to build, we've been able to build relationships or friendships with people in other disciplines and vice, and we've been able to refer to them and they've been able to refer to us. So that's been great. On the sales process, because we're dealing with majority small, small to medium businesses, we don't have, you know, we're not dealing too often with big RFP processes that take six to 12 months to sort of do. So the sales cycle is a bit, you know, it's anywhere from two weeks to probably two months, depending on. And it's been, it's, gr- it's gone out a bit this last probably six months, considering the macro factors and the way of the world. There's a lot more decision makers that need to be involved for a smaller budget. And um, there's a lot more considering that uh, the clients are doing, um, or potential clients are doing when this time last year, they'll sign off on it, no problem. So yeah, there's a bit of, there's a bit of hes- hesitancy that's, that's currently going on, I would say as well. Superb. Okay, well, let's finish off with the Pareto Pickle. So Pareto says that you can get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts. What's one SEO activity that you would recommend that provides incredible results for modest levels of effort? So for me, I know internal linking is a popular one. So shout out to internal linking, but um, (laughs) technical SEO is something that does tend to get underrated, whether that's on the smaller business side, they just don't know it. But if, as my friend Sophie Brandon says, if Google can't index or crawl the website, then what's the point? You could have the best content in the world. But if Google can't find it, then there's no point. So technical SEO tends to either get forgotten about or it's a half done job or it's too big of a job, especially at that enterprise level where there's just too many stakeholders and it takes 12 months to get a title tag changed. But technical SEO is one where keeping on top of it, make the car run smoothly. Like otherwise, 
you're not going to go anywhere. So yeah, technical SEO is one. Um, even the basics, people tend to like get ahead of themselves or think that they're above like the basic technical checks and fixes. Don't because they're low hanging fruit that can bore some wins down the track or actually not even down the track, a bit quicker than say content would. So yeah, technical SEO is one for me. Superb. I've been your host, David Bain. You can find Anthony Barron over at studiohawk.co.uk. Anthony, thanks so much for being on the InSearch SEO podcast. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate the opportunity and great to chat with you. And thank you for listening. Check out all the previous episodes and sign up for a free trial of the Similar Web platform over at similarweb.com.